Mondays we hustling, Tuesday still training, by Wednesday it's raining, so I wet like it's raining, it's, it's not though, try and knock me off my pivot, I'm straight to the block though, I can't do no pump fake, still watch out for the block though, I'm not your average player, I'm all star status, give all y'all answers, not no ball hog bastard, jump shot looks synthetic, but, but it's all natural, body full of ice like I got back from my What's up, y'all? It's Coach Justin. We're here again at the Sit Down Podcast. Um, we have two very, very special guests with me today, uh, two of my very close childhood friends, um, pretty much family at this point, man, just to be honest with you. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while as far as, like, inviting some of my friends down, uh, have them, um, you know, tell their stories and then talk about some of our experiences together, how we, you know, some some stories and all of those things. So uh, without further ado, we have my guy, Alim Moore and Chris Head. How's it going, fellas? What's up, what's up? Pretty good. Man, first of all, thank you guys for coming down. It's obviously something I've been talking to uh, two of my St. Mary's Panthers <laughs> for a while now. We, You know, I can't wait till we get to the point to where we should have played y'all senior year and y'all was scared. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, let's start off with telling people, Lim, let's go start with you. Just tell people a little bit about what you do now. Um, most people, most of you guys know him already uh, and his family pops and everything. So let's uh, can't wait to talk about that either. <laughs> But yeah, let me shut up and let you uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself, brother. Yeah, man, I'm Lynn Moore, uh, from Oakland, California. Uh, right now, I am uh, working with the youth basketball department with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I've been there five years. Salute. Um, yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I tell them all the time, you know, when I got there, we started winning championships. <laughs> so, uh, hey, that ain't a coincidence. Hey, come on, man, I'm, I'm a good luck charm, man. But, That's um, fire. Yeah, I'm working with them, uh, doing that, man. Like I said, you know, just, Trying to live a dream, man. Right. You know, that's the one thing, you know, we talk about, you know, we all played basketball growing up mm-hmm. and we wanted to play in the NBA, man. So I think it's, it's blessed to, to be able to work in the NBA, man. That's so, fire. That's kind of what I got. And, and it's dope that you're uh, working with the youth too, man. Mm-hmm. Salute to you for that. You well, know, I, that's one of my biggest things is giving back. You know, obviously me and you knowing each other, we talk a lot. So uh, salute to you for that, mm-hmm. for real. Uh, I got some questions about that, though. All right. uh, so, so Chris, what's up, brother? See here. How's it going? What's going on, man? Uh, Chris Head, Oakland, California. Um, I'm pretty much a motivator, inspirer. Uh, still playing. I would like to say professional athlete is like my main, uh, my main get down. But you know, I dabble in a little bit of everything. So don't what's be surprised up? if you see me all over the <laughs> internet. You know, one day picking up trash, the next day <laughs> being a middleman. Right. Might be doing a commercial for the Warriors. I'm literally everywhere. Oh, man, well, first of all, thank both of you gentlemen for coming down. Second mm-hmm. of all, I, I want to piggyback off something you said. It kind of will start a, uh, a conversation. And this this episode is going to be a little bit different. It's not won't be more of an interview style. It's going to be like conversation. We'll talk about some stuff, mm-hmm. tell some stories. But um, what you just said, as far as you know, you never really know what you you know what you can see you doing. I, I like mm-hmm. that because I just had a, um, a speaking engagement yesterday, and I was telling the guys who I was speaking to about that. You know, and one of my things when it comes to trying to grow my brand and you know, become an entrepreneur and succeed. And obviously we all want to success, uh, success. But um, it's exactly what you just said is I don't want to limit myself. <clears throat> you know what I mean? I don't want to, um, I was helping a friend of mine out with some advice earlier. And he was like, oh, I have this idea. What should I name it? I was like, bro, you can name it whatever the fuck you want to name it. Mm-hmm. Don't focus on that with like, which he was like, well, I want it to be named after what I'm offering. And I'm like, yeah, but what if you want to offer something else next week? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So what I would say is, Focus on branding yourself. You know what I mean? When you see SJ10, you're going to think of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Regardless of what it, whether I'm a janitorial service, mm-hmm. whether I'm doing a podcast, what, no matter what. So that, that's dope that you said that, bro. I, I want to commend you on, for that. I no, appreciate it. Um, and then for you, uh, how, did you, how did you end up doing what you wanted to do? I always wanted to ask you that, to be yeah. honest, but I just never did. How the hell did you get into working with uh, the Warriors and the camp and stuff? So uh, coming out of St. Mary's, going into San Jose State, um, oh, St. Mary's. <laughs> 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 I had a lot of family that went to St. Mary's, yeah, obviously. Yeah, we broke his heart a couple times. <laughs> I um, can't wait to talk about that. So, coming out of St. Mary's, going to San Jose State, um, 
you know, we wanted to have a summer job. Okay. But obviously, you know, NCAA, it's only certain things you can, you can do. do. All right. So uh, one of my assistant coaches was cool with um, one of the guys that w worked for the Warriors. Mm -hmm. So I would just work the camps as like a, a summer job, you know, and just kind of, you know, make some money to have, you know, so I can buy, you know, hot dogs and, you know, top ramen for my, for my dorm, right. you know, in right. college. But right. um, that was something that I did you know, all through college. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I graduated, I started working with uh, the game operations okay. department and the basketball operations department with the Golden State Warriors, just okay. kind of, you know, part-time, trying to, you know, get my feet get wet. Feet wet yeah. And, you know, camps came back around, they had an opening, they interviewed me for it, and, you know, I've been there five years now. So um, when you started, was it just like a camp supervisor, like just pr pretty much working at the camp? Yep, just a camp and coach. Just, and you just worked your way up? Camp That's coach. That's fire, bro. And then, you know, I went to, from camp coach, okay, you're going to run this session. And then from you running this session, okay, now you're going to run three sessions in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then it went to, okay, now you're going to be a director for the camps. So now you're going to be the supervisor and have coaches under you. And you know, from there, it's just it's blossom, man. And that's what you're doing now, is that's the what director. I'm doing now. That's fire, man. Yeah, the camps. That's fire, man. Yeah. That's fire. Um, for you, uh, Chris. So, as far as uh, you're one of the hardest workers I know, first of all. Appreciate um, that. and obviously we talk um, a lot, but talk to me a little bit about how you stay motivated to, uh, you know, keep pushing no matter what, no matter what your circumstances are. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, just talk to me a little bit about that, if you Definitely. don't mind. Um, well, I appreciate that, I, and I do appreciate the comments, man. I, uh, a lot of people do tell me that, you know, I work hard, and a big reason for that is because, you know, I do want to inspire. Uh, but most importantly, uh, it's because I remember uh, the days that I was down, uh, you know, like the days where I saw people give up and they were really close, or the days that even when I talked to people that I love, like, you were so close, like I know you could do it, right. but they didn't do it for themselves. Right. So it's like something in me that says, you know what, no matter what happens, uh, you might have a bad day, might have a bad week, a bad month, mm -hmm. it's going to work for you. You know that's what I mean? So that's right. one of the biggest reasons why I continue to do what I do. And I, I think secondly, um, when I see like you guys doing your thing, or like I said, my, my brother to the right of me, uh, starting with the warrior camp, uh, uh, pretty much, I was a basketball player at the camp. So I was like 11 years old when I first started learning how to play. And uh, basketball has just always put me in a better place. Right. So it's like, why not stop it if this is where you feel the most comfortable right. and uh, the most happy? And I think that's a big reason why I continue to go for it. You know, so. That's what's up, man. Well, salute to you for that. Definitely. Um, thank you guys both for sharing that. Um, I want to go back a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. back to obviously when we all met each other. Um, Lim, let's start with you again and uh, tell me how you got in the hoop and uh, what age you were, stuff like that. So, um, I was maybe four when really? I started really like playing and just kind of like love. Four, bro, four. you saying it like that's fucking normal. <laughs> that was four, bro. I was you know four, how old I was when I started hooping? How old? Bulldogs. <laughs> like that's I swear, like that like a few months before Bulldogs, I was at the YMCA and then I was we the, the Bulldogs and the Rebels were there and then yeah. that's how the, I was like I get to pick between the two. And that's how I ended up on the Bulldogs. I swear to God, bro. And this dude talking about four like that's four, normal, bro. bro. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it's a family thing, you right, know. Right. Um you know, my cousins Will and Chris Brew, mm -hmm. you know, we grew up together obviously and right. you know, pops with the ball in my hand young. It was something I was just drawn to. So, four four, you know, Age four at East Lake Y uh, with Shorty. <laughs> with Shorty. Shout out Shorty. You Shout know, out to Shorty um, for sure. Playing on the little baby courts, right. me, uh, Jared, and Kev. Mm -hmm. And Chris, like I said, just, you know. Kevin Green? Kevin Green. For real? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So we, we started on the baby courts. Well, we was on the baby courts. Was he hella tall back then? Too? Yeah, Kev was playing on the, you know. <laughs> Kev <laughs> was probably 6'4 yeah. at 4. <laughs> They didn't believe he was five. You right. know what I'm saying? They had him playing with the nine year olds. He was still dominating. That's but, hella funny. Yeah, man. Four years old at East Lake, man. And That's you fine. know, it just grew from there. What about you? Man, I, I started because of because of Pops, because uh, of my uncle, man. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you finish, but I can't keep letting y'all disrespect my guy like that. <laughs> he is a legend. So address him as such. <laughs> the legend. The legend. I the live more yeah, senior. All right? That's Let's get that out the back. I'll let you <laughs> say it, then I'll let you say it. I was going to wait. I was going to get to him. Yeah, so but he's like, a fucking legend, bro. That's a legend. Fact. He is a legend. Legend. Like, he, I, 
I don't even go finish, bro. Cause I don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll be talking for no, hours no, about him. For real, cause you know we all three of us used to be in that uh in that uh that UConn, right? Uh, just riding and going back and forth to places. But uh, I remember the first day, um, he was at EYDC, uh, one of his first things, and I had already knew Auntie Regina from uh, my mom, mm -hmm. being like mutual friends and damn near family. Mm -hmm. So he played one day at EYDC, and uh, his dad was like. Why don't you just, you know, just go in there, kind of play around? So honestly, I was just doing whatever I need to do to keep up with him. Right. And I remember that day vividly. It was uh, Kareem was there, uh, Lil Quan was there, and uh, maybe Mike Scott or somebody. But like they were just playing it, and I was like, all right, let me just run around and see what it's like. And and then uh, Uncle was just like, you, you liked it, huh? It was close. Like yeah, yeah. Like I really do. Like he was like, how right, old were you at this point? Man, I believe I was maybe nine, okay. nine or ten. Okay. Uh, and, uh, like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I was like, go ahead and play. And the first place I played was EOYDC. And then after oh, wow. that, it was like basketball camp, uh, you know, with us with the Bulldogs. I played a year under you guys because right, 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 right. of my birthday. Right, right. So like I always looked up to y'all and uh, the first team, like with Bobby and them, and we, even when the soldiers used to practice. Right. So that's why I got into it, but definitely, uh, okay. yeah. And then uh, you, just a four-year-old <laughs> phenom. Hey, man, love try, man. You know, what can I say? Um, so what, what was the first AU team you played for? Was it the Bulldogs or did you play? Uh, we were so young. It was, it was like the Bulldogs that was, the, was the, first, the first team I played for because uh, Pops was looking for a team for me, you know what I'm saying? And, and he was thinking of starting his own. And he was like, you know what? Um, you know, Pops from East Oakland. So, right. you know, he, he got ties right, deep. Right, 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 right. And, right. You know, somebody with the Bulldogs, and he was like, "Hey, man, you gonna go play over there?" <laughs> so he threw me in the fire. He was like, "Hey, man, bro, one go thing about on you, I don't know if I ever even told you this, but when you came to the Bulldogs, <laughs> it was literally like <laughs> press break was give I the ball, just get out the way. <laughs> like I've never seen no shit like that, yeah. bro. And it wasn't like you was trying to run hella fast on everybody or dribbling hella crazy. It was just you had such a a firm, fundamentally sound handle. Mm. To, it like at that young of an age, I remember. I literally remember that. Like, bro, yeah. this nigga used to break the press by himself, <laughs> or at least get it to the second line. Right. Yeah. Like he's breaking that. If you win a two to one, he's getting past the first two. You feel me? But um, how how early did you start working on like your handles, and how early are you taking hoops serious? Um, so I went to St. Pascal's for like elementary school, and my dad coached my team. I played a grade up, so he coached my team, and then he coached the eighth grade team. So I was in the third grade playing fourth grade, and he was coaching the eighth grade team. Mm -hmm. So he would bring me to their practices just to like, you know, get me ready. Right. You know, that's my dad, mm -hmm. and they had a press. So, oh, so okay. Yeah, gotcha. I so see where you're he going. used to go like, okay, y'all gotta, you know, guard him, and he would tell him, like, beat him, beat beat his ass, like, mm -hmm. don't don't take it easy. Mm -hmm. And I took that very personal. Right. And I would break their press, and he would stop practice. Man, it's a fucking third grader <laughs> breaking y'all press. Small That's ass hilarious. gym, too. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, in the little gym. Small. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, I, I think I started taking it serious, like, third grade. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once we got with the Bulldogs, right? you know, it's a real deal. it started. Right. Well, it started yeah. for real. What about you? So you started a little uh, – Around the time normal people did, like myself. <laughs> Four, uh -huh. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah. I, I think I started when and one really popped off. Okay. So uh, and one was going. You know, we at Rainbow. I'm not even working on the jump shot. Trying I'm trying to throw it on moves. somebody's yeah. head. Yeah. Yeah. I'm dribbling like 20 times, right. and then like I just remember all the coaches just like, yeah, he could do that, but uh, he can't go straight. <laughs> so you feel me? My handle was there. It's right. always been there, but mm -hmm. then it was like focusing on how to actually play basketball. That's why I got with the Bulldogs. Right. That's fire. Yeah. Um, so, for Chris, for you, when you uh, – how long did you play for the Bulldogs? I played uh, two years, I believe. Uh, right after – actually, everybody kind of started leaving. leaving. And they just went over and did a whole other thing. And then I went with uh, – I was with the Rebels, I remember, for like a week. And then I went to DBC. Okay. So then that's how it kind of just switched over. And, uh, yeah, like I've been going to school with him all my life until college. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the school team was there, everything else was regular, but then DBC, and, and right. that's how I kind of, I like to say, I met my second family in the streets. Right. Because, so. you know, DBC was, was yeah. us, but it was Hoopers. Right, 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 right. Yeah. for sure. <laughs> what about you, Lim? Who'd you uh, play with? I know the answer, but who'd you play with uh, after the Bulldogs? Rebels. Yeah, man. Oakland know. Rebels. Oakland Rebels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oakland Rebels. Straight shout up. Out to yeah, shout out to Yeah, shout out to Dion, man. You know, he got a couple of them, but um, yeah, man, we went from the Oakland Bulldogs to the Oakland Rebels. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was when we were obviously we we're on the same team at mm -hmm. this point. 
Um, before we move on, I kind of want to touch on this. We might as well just get it out the way earlier because, you know, we this is around the age and stuff was happening. Um, how did you – How was it ever tough for you? And be as honest as you want to be, obviously. Yeah. Was it ever tough for you when it came to your dad – being such a father figure slash mentor figure for a bunch of other kids? Mm. Um, I think early on it was tough just because, like, you know, that's pops. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And for me, realizing it now, looking back now, and, and how he interacted and how he did his thing, I appreciate him because it, it molded me. But back then, you know, it – it took a toll because it was like, man, you know, you always taking care of all these other little right. kids, man. Mm -hmm. like, fuck them little kids. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> fuck them right. kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but, you know, over, uh, you know, overall, I appreciate it now. Right. But back then, yeah, it definitely. And, and, and I, I wanted to talk about that because that's normal. And mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to ask that because obviously I have a six-year-old son and mm -hmm. I'm a coach. So I, I, and I t I've talked to Scott about other fathers that are coaches. I've talked to them about it because I'm curious to know and I want to be aware and conscious of it. You know what I mean? Sure. Is there any point, ever a time where you kind of like mentioned that to him and voiced that, that, that frustration to him? Um, I think he always knew, he man. You know knew. what I'm saying? You, you know Pops, right. man. Dude right. is wise, man. Right, right, so, right, right, right. you know, he, he would notice it and, you know, for him, he was like, man, figure it out. Right. That's you know fire. what I'm saying? Like, you got you to gotta deal with it. And obviously, if I ever wanted to talk to him about it, he would definitely sit and listen of to course. me. But he was like, man, figure it out, man. And understand, like, it's, it's bigger than you. Right. Like, you're always my son. I'll always be first in right. his eyes. But, you know, it's about carrying the next generation so that we can have these conversations. Right. And then I want to even pick – just to double down on that, it's almost like, I mean, your personality, you're, you're, it, there's like a certain group of – cats right that I put in a certain group when I say that it's like you've been very mature since we since I've known you, mm -hmm. you Kevin Green uh the Taylors yourself uh PJ and TJ Taylor when mm -hmm. I say the Taylors like there's certain cats that no even at that grade I feel like, like you act like a grown-ass <laughs> man you know what I mean but um when it comes to that is do you uh do you think do you think that's because of um uh, like a conscious effort of pops is like raising or whatever like were you aware that you were pretty much like that, or was that just you being you? Um, I think as I got a little bit older, so, like, you know, when we started with the Bulldogs, probably not, but, like, toward the end of the, the Rebels' journey and then, you know, kind of going into eighth grade, I kind of noticed that, you know, I had a different temperament than, you know, a lot of my peers just from the extent of, like, our conversations right. and how we interacted, you know what I'm saying? I, I could be in a room with anybody, I feel like, and not feel uncomfortable. Right. And I think I always prided myself on that. That's why I asked that because I feel like with, um, when it comes to you, you have a very outgoing personality, mm -hmm. right? But I think your dad is like times five. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say, yeah. right, and I say that to say, I don't know if a lot of your personal, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of your personal relationships will be as strong as they are if it wasn't for Pops. Mm. Thousand percent. That's kind of my met method to why I was asking those questions. Thousand percent. Okay. Because even with me, like, I spent so much time at your house. Yeah. And most of the time, of course, it was for you. Yeah. But I would go to your dad directly and be like, Facts. hey, can I come over this uh, weekend? Or we got a tournament. I'll spend a can I spend a night? Yeah. I, I spent Christmas with y'all at times, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, that's fact. crazy. It's facts. And, and it's like those, those um, I was telling my mom and my step pops about this not too long ago. And I, I think I even text you and I was like, hey, give me your pops number. I can't find it. And I text yeah. him because he was one of the first people to tell me that I was different. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, there's vivid memories. I'm sure you guys have them to where it was a, literally a day where we were, um, it was the holidays. We were at your table mm -hmm. and I won't tell all the business, but we were at your table having a conversation. And when he heard me speak, he was like, no, you're, there's something different about this kid, right? And he told me that. Mm -hmm. And I had never had anybody in my life ever tell me something like that. And then to how it comes full circle, and now I speak on camera. Like, that shit means a lot to me. And I even text him more more recent, than, and I text you again, more recent at the time, I just text him yeah. for the same, just to tell him, like, how much I appreciate him. Because I don't know if he understood what he was doing at the time, but it, it let me know, like, okay, it, the way I felt internally, because we all know, and I'm sorry I'm on a rant, but we all know, like, we're raised in a certain environment. Fast. The way you feel internally might not be what you put out because Fast. you have to survive. There's survival techniques, mm -hmm. right? So I have to 
fit in almost. And not saying I was faking, but there was some shit that I wasn't. Like now, I'm having fun. I do my fun shit now that yeah. I'm, a, I'm a nerd. You know what I mean? I'm a. I love electronics. I love technology. Like I yeah, love to too. teach myself shit. I love knowledge. I love learning. But back then, I was out partying and running the streets. And don't get me wrong, I was having hell of fun. <laughs> but it just wasn't my element. But yeah. your pop, mm-hmm. looking back, it's like when I'm doing what I'm doing now. When I think back of the the monumental times in my life when people showed me who I really was, I, I, I don't ignore that. You know what I mean? So I want to commend you for your pops. Hey, look, <laughs> I, I mean, to, to add to that, you know what I'm saying? Like, see it tell you, like, you know, we're going to talk about the relationships and stuff, uh, but, you know, we was at St. Mary's, man, and, you know, like you said, y'all, y'all was on a little different path. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. And, you know, for pops, man, he... Just like I said, he's wise, man. So he just knew, like, man, they be all right. Right. Yeah. They're going to be good. Like, mm-hmm. they got to do that. Mm-hmm. They got to go through these situations just because it'll help to be here now. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's and fact. to answer your first question, like, I wouldn't be, like, the reason I coach and the reason I'm working with you is because of him. That's fire. Straight up. Salute to the GOAT, man. Salute to the <laughs> fucking legend. For real, bro. I, I, because I, my thing is it's showing love, bro. And yeah. people like that need their flowers because yeah. – that, that when they say it takes a village, bro, that's a, a like that that scenario of what I just explained should be in the dictionary. That is because true. you have a whole nother family mm-hmm. who's inviting me into their holiday space. Yes. And this wasn't just one Christmas. Yep. This was a like a every year thing. Is when we played together, pretty much every year I was over there. Yep. If we had tournaments, I was spending the night. And I will be lying to say that. How we used to pile up in your in the Yukon, like he just Man. said. I can't <laughs> wait to do that, bro. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to be. It was fun. What your pops was for, like literally. I swear to God, bro. People like that are are reason why I'm a coach at Mac. Yeah. Right. When we all know I have to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I could go get a job at another school, but mm-hmm. I want I want to be in in direct directly impacting my community. Facts. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So I, I want to just get that out the way because that talk is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For um, sure. to kind of sw- segue to UC, t- talk to me a little bit, and you kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but. But just to give uh, um, Big Alim some more flowers, yeah. tell me about what he means to you and your relationship with him. Well, I, um, I always call myself a bridge, mm-hmm. um, a bridge like bridging the gap, bridging that's people fire. together, bringing uh, I'm still in that. what just, I can. Hey, man, it's, it's good. <laughs> we, bri- we bridging. That's, that's a bridge. So, right. But I, I think he was the original bridge before I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. So when we think back on the UConn or we think back on the tournaments, just imagine how many kids was at the house when you weren't there right. or when I wasn't there. Right. Like I just remember, I, I always remember this, like I love the, I love the car because – there would be seven to eight, maybe nine kids like in that car, right? Making it work. And bit and, and Unc would take everybody to the house, yep. bro. So I actually got to see like not only all the east, that's, but hey, all that's the a north, very good fucking point, bro. All the west. Hey. And I was always the quiet one. So right. I would listen to y'all. Everybody was a little bit older. So mm-hmm. what Pops did for me was just show me like he he showed me pretty much how it goes. Right. My dad is a, a very quiet person. Like he'll tell you like my pops though, he he barely taught. Mm-hmm. But when he does, he say something super profound. Mm-hmm. So so Unc is saying everything that my dad probably will say at some point. Salute to your pops, too. Yeah, you thank know, you. Appreciate obviously it. Obviously, he raised a great, you know, young man. So thank you. Thank that, you. No, seriously, though, we got to salute to all our pops. Exactly. I mean, good yeah. shit. Obviously, there's plenty of pops who people who didn't have their dad in their life at all. So right. that's uh, that's fire, though, bro. And I yeah. hope I, and I, I wanted to touch on that because I hope I want your dad to know what he meant. Yeah. Not only myself, his uh, like there's we can go on. And, on. and that's the crazy thing, because <laughs> right. like you just said, there was times where we weren't even on the same team no more when no. I was over there. Yeah. Or there was times where it would be me, you, and Omari, and he played for the soldiers. <laughs> so we'd be in the backyard on the hoop, yeah. two on one, whooping his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, for real. Yeah. Shout out to Omari, man. Oh my God. Yeah. But man, I just wanna I just wanted to, you know, get that out the way early and then, you know, let's so we'll go more back into you guys' story. Yes, sir. Um so you guys both went to school together. Uh, pretty much like you said earlier throughout high school. And I didn't even peep that until you said it. Mm-hmm. Was that like a thing that y'all kind of, a pact or something y'all did, or was it just? It just happened. It, had, it, it was going to happen. Like yeah. even when St. Pascal shut down our seventh grade year, mm-hmm. uh, we didn't even scramble for schools. It was like I already knew I was going to be at school with them, but then I was worried about high school. So I think after St. Pascal and we went to St. Leo for a year, which, mm-hmm. which changed both of our lives, Fast. it was just like I didn't even ask him where he was going to school. I just I knew. I knew it was going to happen. What, you know what, what um what do you why did going to St. Leo's change you guys' lives? Ooh, uh. <laughs> it just it just gave us a different perspective. Like being at St. Pascal's, like that's legit up the street from the house. Mm-hmm. 
So And it's like your school. Yeah. Because y'all been there so long. You know what I'm saying? So it was just we comfortable there. You know what I'm saying? We know everybody. And by the seventh grade year, like, you know, I ain't gonna say big man on campus, but, but like we run this shit. Yeah, like this yeah. is what it is. So I think going to St. Leo's gave us a different perspective on um, life. you a little bit? Very much so. And really? then it gave us opportunities to meet different people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we met Bari there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mill, Mark, like everybody, different people in our lives that, you know, we still cool with today. Mm-hmm. And it jump started us to get to St. Mary's too. Yeah. Because the principal there, Miss Emerald, her husband was the assistant coach at St. Mary's. And Miss Emerald loved us. Yeah. We came in wrecking havoc and she <laughs> loved us. She was like, Oh yeah, there there are challenges. We're gonna figure out how to straighten them out. But yeah. uh, she loved shout out Miss Emerald because she loved us. So wait, I was gonna ask that next. That's how you guys ended up at St. Mary's? Kinda. Pretty much. It, so so what where would you have maybe when because you even mm-hmm. just said that you yeah. didn't know if y'all were going to high school together were you guys thinking about going somewhere else at first uh it was you can St. say mary's. it bro it's okay <laughs> it was st mary's man uh odell got some thought odell got some thought i just you know no disrespect to anybody who went to odell man but it just wasn't. that like hurt you to say bro yeah man because it's just it's, <laughs> is it panther pride or is yeah, it yeah it's, oh, it's panther pride man okay. and then you know shout out to odell but now nah, that wasn't gonna happen Okay. Um, is this and then be high be high was almost a thing because mm. my dad went to be high my mom went to be high my gotcha. uncles my okay. aunts like it was like a lineage like okay if so you, it was your mac to me yeah like if you if you ask about the brew name right because that's my mom's maiden right. name like my uncle up there william will brew he's a legend mm-hmm. so you know that was that was gonna be that him and pops was up there doing their thing so yeah do you know what's marriage. crazy, bro? And, and I might cut this out because it's kind of embarrassing. I never knew that your mom and Will Brew were brother and sister. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I feel you. I never knew. I knew it was auntie, uncle. Yeah. Like that, they were, that was your uncle and, you know, yeah. cousins. But I never knew how. So did you know that? I'm yeah. sure you did. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was, I was with. I was yeah, with. <laughs> I never knew that. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. my first cousin. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, my first cousins. Uh, shout out to the Bruce, man. I yeah, love Yeah, my show. dog. Yeah, that's a, that's family. Yeah. Uh, my mom still does uh, Michelle Bruce hair. Yeah. <laughs> they they my, every time I see my my mom, oh Michelle say hi. How you doing? <laughs> she, Michelle asked her about you. I love that though. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Small that's word. another extended family for sure. Um, so um. What about you? Is it kind of the same school, same high school? Um, if it wasn't Odell, it, w- it was going to be Skyline. But oh, wow. my, my really? mom already knew because, uh, like I said, when I was at DBC, playing with DBC, <laughs> I was on a whole other path. Right. And, like, you know, we, we crossed paths of course. before. And it even, like, I know he was a little concerned, like we saying they're getting it out now, but it was probably going to be Skyline. And my mom was just like, she would look at Lowe, she would look at everybody. Right, right, right. Like, uh, you know, I think you get that same <laughs> Like, cool. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, how about both of you guys? Just tell me a little bit about um, you. You played for the Rebels all the way up to, until high school? Uh, no. I played for the Rebels until the eighth grade, and then I played for the Soldiers. Okay, so you mm-hmm. did go to Soldiers. That's I right. Soldiers. That's right. You went to the, you, Jared. No. no, it was me. Oh, we were SWAT. Yeah. You were Soldiers. That's was, right. You were Soldiers yeah. 3? No, eighth grade, it was just us. It was Who else was on your team? Oh, shit, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're going to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all left us, nigga. That's what the <laughs> fuck that. I don't know if yeah. about that. We Hell yeah, we're going to. That is crazy. That's what you, Shaheed, Ken, Mari, all of them. Dez, D. White. Yeah. yeah. Jerry Brown. Oh, man, ain't that a bitch. Where it had to happen right after we did that, uh, that little jamboree thing where they was picking people uh-huh. and we all stayed against something? each other yeah, at Rainbow. I remember that. Yeah, and then after that, bro, it just seemed like, hey, you went in a whole nother direction. Yeah, man. And that's, when, that's around the time my dad came home and we started SWAT. Mm-hmm. And then y'all was the soldiers, yeah. And then how about you? You was with DBC I was I was with DBC back and forth, do a couple tournaments with the soldiers, a couple tournaments with a, a team uh, called the East Bay Bulldogs out in Pleasanton. But it was mostly like DBC. Like the East I, Bay Bulldogs, were they like red, blue? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that team. Yeah. And so I, went to I was the only, so. I was probably the only black guy on my team. So me too. I, me yeah, too. This, there you go. So. <laughs> Y'all had it. <laughs> it's it's so. funny, bro. It's, um, that's hilarious. So t- talk to me. Um, and I can, you know, chime in as well. How was it adjusting to the high school game? Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys both played varsity as freshmen? Nah. You I, didn't? Uh, Did you, Lim? I end up playing varsity. Okay, yeah. okay. Talk to me about that a little bit. Um, I think for me, it was just the, the level of the strength and the, and the quickness. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, the game, yeah. So I, I came in and my and Will was already there. So that's part of the reason. The other part of the reason why I went to St. Mary's because my cousin was already there. He was already setting it up for me and Chris to come. Um, but 
So when we when I got there, Chris Brew was already moved to varsity. Right. I played. I did a uh, practice with JV, and the coach looked at me and said, "Nah, <laughs> you can go ahead to varsity." But it was just like, like the the the, the jump from high school to college. I felt like that from like the eighth grade to high school. Like these dudes are strong, yeah. man. It's fast and the like, pace is different. Yeah, yeah, and and you know it's just about getting comfortable. But yeah, it was definitely a difference. What about for you? Yeah, I, uh, I actually started on freshman. I'm not, oh, I'm, wow, not really? I'm not afraid to say it, man. Yeah, I, me I was embarrassed uh, at my JV tryout, and they was just like, "Now nah, you play freshman." But I worked so hard. Uh, another testament to the beginning mm -hmm. that I ended up playing varsity uh, toward the end of, or toward the beginning of the next year. So I jumped pretty much from freshman to var mm -hmm. within like an eight month span, oh, wow. and I just I, I wouldn't stop. Whatever I had to do, like dive on the floor, all that. Uh, mm -hmm. Freshman was okay. Uh, JV was okay, but varsity was the one. I was like, all right, I'm here regardless. I'm just improve every day. So, <clears throat> your your so your freshman year, how far did you guys go? Freshman year, we lost in NCS, I believe. To who? You remember? We lost to Cardinal Newman, I Cardinal think. Cardinal Newman. Cardinal Newman. I yeah, I that. think we in Santa Rosa. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we lost. They're to usually them. good in football. Yeah. I think they had a girl that was pretty good Hooper back in the day. Yeah, and they, yeah. they, 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 yeah, they were, they were. I mean, my freshman year, I didn't play a lot, so I, you know, I, I kind of almost discredit that year. Right. It didn't matter. It didn't matter to me. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then what about uh, sophomore year? So, so sophomore year is when. Are you are you on bar bar? Yeah. For real? So sophomore year I started. So oh I went wow. From not Shit. playing to starting. Um, Who else is on your team? Who's the upperclassman on your team at this point? Um, I know Will Brew was there. Will, Will so my, he's a junior. He's a junior. Um, Shout out Marcus Simeon. Yeah, Marcus Simeon. He played for the A's. He just got traded. Um, or free agency. Yeah, Blue, he Blue played with you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I remember him. He was a shooter. shooter. Maybe if I see him. Shooter. Is he black? Mm -hmm. Okay. Justin shooter. Shields. Yeah. Lacrosse Justin player. Shields. We had yeah. nine D one athletes uh, within our like, I guess, junior, senior, sophomore span, yeah. and it just kept going. Fire. The Lee twins was there. Right. Dominique yep. and Demetrius, they came in as freshmen. Um, but the upperclassmen, it was, you know, my, my guy Guy, Ryan, they didn't really I remember play those after. names. That's crazy. Yeah. Guy and Ryan. I remember yeah. those names. Light skin dude, yeah. So those, oh. those are the upperclassmen. But we went to NorCal Championship my sophomore year, lost to Carter Newman again. For real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so we got to the NorCal Championship. It's a game, a game where from state to play. And you're starting at this point? Mm hmm. And then how, how did you. Uh, How'd you play? What was your numbers like? You remember? Like about sophomore year, it's probably like eight and seven, yeah, something like solid, that. Like yeah. you know, solid. Well, you seven know. assists is really yeah. Good. You know, I, I think that was the one thing because we had we always played three guards, me, Will, and Chris. So you know, it was running yeah, jump, yeah. you know, and Will and Chris filling the lanes. I'm pushing right. the break or whatever the case. Right. But yeah. Um, and then. So you're on varsity at this point. Just watching. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that, Just bro. Watching. Some it people ain't even doing that. It was a lot of people watching from the stands. <laughs> <laughs> so ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. Yeah. Um, and then how about junior year? Who, who are you playing? Are you still with the Soldiers, right? Hey, you? Yeah, so that that was Soldiers 3. So that was me, Dez, Bari, Kev. Um, Speaking of Bari, before you finish, you introduced yeah. me to Bari, which is crazy. You probably don't remember this. No. I might have told, told this when I interviewed Bari. But we was at Tice Valley. This is crazy how you remember random shit like this. Mm -hmm. But we were at Tice Valley. <clears throat> Me and you was walking through Tice Valley. I don't even think we were playing. We was just there with your dad. Yeah. And um, you and him, we were walking out. He, you and him stopped. Y'all was chopping it up. So me being me at the time, I think we're probably, he might have been like in the eighth grade. So mm -hmm. we had to be in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, and he's like, uh, nah, he might have, might, we might have been a little younger than that. But anyway, he goes, um. Uh, he, he's talk y'all talking. I'm like, who the fuck is this little ass? <laughs> and you like, nah, just he the real deal. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck that now. I don't care. <laughs> like, you know, back then I was retarded. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, nah. He just got back from like it was like an ABCD camper or yeah, one of them yeah, little camp. I'm like, oh, camp. for real, he one of them. Yeah. And then you introduced us or whatever. And then you actually, a lot of people don't know this, and this is another side story. But me and Omari. Had a weird like issue. Very much so. You remember yeah. this? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I didn't know because you you squashed that. You remember that? I remember that. That got squashed at your house. The bridge. Yes. Yeah, that's bridge. but that's that's crazy because we we was supposed to fight on site. Oh, very much. Yeah, so. Yeah, and then we uh I don't even know how that happened, but somehow I don't remember the details of how you squashed it, but I remember that being squashed. And I want to say that was around the same day, same time. That, that same weekend when we when you introduced me to Bart. So yeah, so it's funny. 
funny story about Bari. So when we got to St. Leo's, like I said, we met Bari. Mm -hmm. So we was the new kids, and we was the two best basketball players here. It's like, okay. So we were like the captains at recess. Mm -hmm. And all, you know, we lined up, okay, we're going to pick first. And I remember looking like, man, who is this? Like, I ain't seen him in class. So like, oh, I pick him. So we playing, I'm like, hey, man, what's your name? He's like, oh, Jabari. I was like, okay, bro, what, what grade you in? He's like, six. <laughs> six, nigga, you my height. What the fuck? And it was like, nice. Nice. I'm like, okay. Sir. So from then on, like, I knew he was the real deal. You know, so that, that leads to your story. Yeah. Like, he's, <laughs> That's he's crazy. Been that. Um, and then who who are you playing with at this point? Uh, um, I'm with I'm with DBC, DBC. Uh, but like I'm in the same car everywhere he's going. I'm there. Okay. So like, my game would be done, or if we had the same tournament, I end up leaving with them. Like, right. You know, Pops and Miles just want to cut. Like right, we right, saw right. you play, we good. Right. But you know, I'm staying for everything. So I and just, then we were all like a family. So we watched each other saying, play. Man. We played with each other. I yeah, damn near played other. every every team y'all played with. I damn near played with them. Yeah, that's just crazy. Saying, I was that's just crazy. There, so. Um, so then how was that next year, junior year at St. Mary's? Junior mm -hmm. year is, is, is that's, that's the year that, you know, we went 33-2. and two. Mm -hmm. um, Who was we the two losses? To the state. Uh, we lost to Sack High. Mm -hmm. So that was Chase, Chase Tapley, Chase Tapley Chase. Will Davis, uh, Josiah. Shout out, Joe. Yeah, we Kill lost it. to them uh, at Jesuit by five. I mean, I'll never forget that game. We was up at halftime. They came out in the zone. Oh. Cat it. Uh, they knew what time it was, yeah. but so we <laughs> lost to them, and then we lost state to uh, Campbell Hall. So I was, that was that Drew game. Holiday. I was at that game. Yeah, that was that was tough. But yeah, so we went thirty-three and two. It was a great year. Um, that was kind of the kickoff to like my recruitment. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when that, I'm gonna take that back. Sophomore year, going into junior year, that summer is when I really started like going to like national tournaments, stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then kind of put my name on the map. So yeah, that's. That sophomore year going into junior year was, was big for me. And then this, at this point, um, for you, junior year, how was that for you? Getting a little bit of time. Uh, I'm breaking in. Uh, just kind of I've been in the shell, like, on the court, off the court. So I'm just learning how to process things. Mm -hmm. And it opened up my recruitment, too, because I had an article done on me. Uh, I'll never forget Kevin uh, McCarty. Mm -hmm. McCarty. Oh, I remember that name. I remember from, that name. Uh, yeah. so North he Cal did, Press, North right? Cal Press. Yep. So he did an article on me and called me the glue guy. And it oh, stuck wow. with me stuck with me to this day because, like mm -hmm. I said, the bridge, bringing everything together. He called me the glue guy. And ever since then, I was giving my first letters, like Pac-12, Pac-10 at the time. Uh, Mountain West, and it was just letters because right, my right, grades right. was going to get me there, right. and then it was going to be that. But yeah, like, yeah, I say junior year for sure. That's what's up. And then, um, that how so that obviously you guys played against Campbell Hall with Drew Holiday in the mm -hmm. state. How much did you you guys lost, right? About how much we lost? We did too, so don't feel we bad. lost by about the 22. same. Okay, we lost we by got 18. Smack. Mm -hmm. Same shit. Right. But the cold part is Drew wasn't even the one that served. I was at, that's what I was just about to say. That was one. Of, I think y'all game and our game was one of those just bad days because we shot the ball terrible. Y'all just looked out of sync. Y'all kind of got on a run. I remember this game because I was there. Mm -hmm. I remember Drew had 19, I believe. Austin McGroom had yep. 30. 30, oh, so you guys. 30 I remember you guys were down 19 at one point. Y'all went on a run, cut it to like 11, and then yep. Drew got that tip dunk and hit a three, and it was just like so, – I, I remember that game vividly. Over. Yeah. But – um um. Talk about that a little bit. How was it seeing Drew Holiday in the league now and now and knowing that you played against him? So, like I was saying, like that summer, you know, kind of going to some of these, you know, pump camp mm -hmm. and, you know, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. Um, you know, he was down there and I remember playing against him a couple times and like, okay, like he's like, this is, there's a difference. Like he's not even a high school player. He's an NBA player. He's so a pro. Getting on the court with him that, that game, um, I remember there was a jump ball and like me and him got tied up. And I'm holding on for dear life. And he just kind of looking at me, kind of smiling. And I was like, man, it's different. Yeah, <laughs> it's different. It. But no, nah, it, it, as a pro. And he, he's, he's one of my uh, favorite guys to watch now. Just he, play, he still plays hoop the right way, bro. And, and it's hard to find people that play hoop the right way, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I Not agree. saying that I know, know it all, but just the way I like to watch hoop, Drew Holiday, he's one of them. And, yeah, no, um, he, he, he. <laughs> yeah, he, he had good. it all. And and yeah, then the the young kid, the Austin McBroom kid, no shots at him, but nah. yeah, man. We didn't we didn't I, no disrespect, but we didn't game plan for him. No, and not even plan. that. It's yeah. like he, he, yeah, you got hot. I watched him literally, bro. And again, no shade, no disrespect, but yeah. this is why I say it was a fluke. I watched him literally probably like a month later. Yeah. At uh, he played with the soldiers. With the soldiers. I, that's what I'm about to tell you. I want to say we yeah. might have been at City College at a tournament or somewhere. Yeah. And I saw s some local kids. I think it was little Delani and them. Yeah. He couldn't get past half court on them. 
Like I watched that with my own two eyes. Literally, like right after, because yeah. I came to see him. Cause I'm like, I just watched him give yeah. my boys 30. thirty. Thirty, and it was like a comfortable thirty. He was yeah, hitting yeah. it from three ball to the cup free throws, yeah. and he he was controlling the game because I think Drew was in foul trouble. Or something. Yeah, I mean, and that was the thing. Like we was like, oh, right. but we didn't game plan for him. You know, that was on us, but. And did he ever end up making it Division One or? College? I think he played. Played D One. Oh, played D One. Now he does like, the YouTube thing. Yeah, he's a YouTuber. He's what do you big, mean? But he's on YouTube. Actually, he's an influencer with the Ace. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah he's type, a YouTuber. Type man. Yeah. He's really. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's nah, big he flipped too. It. <laughs> oh, I have to. I have to see it. Yeah, that's yeah. dope, though. Yeah, it is. Teach his own. Yeah, yeah. salute to that man. Bro. I mean, shit. I'm trying to be big on YouTube too. Hey, bro. <laughs> you gonna be there for sure. Right. You getting there? Um, get so, there. so let's talk about senior year a little bit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, you are playing with the Hoosiers now. Yeah, we kicked y'all ass. <laughs> at LA. We kicked. No, we gonna talk about oh, that. We're talking about oh. that. We're talking we about kicked it. y'all. <laughs> Ah, I'm gonna be real, bro. I couldn't wait for that game. I, I know <laughs> because you no, know, and you. I know you feel my pain because me and you have something sim- in common, and I. I don't know that has nothing to do with our connection because we brothers. Yeah. But we have that um that uh, underdog thing. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And I feel like me and you were, and this is just me looking at the game outside of myself. Yeah. Me and you were two of the purest point guards in Northern California. I agree. That I agree could do too. that could do everything. Mm-hmm. Like we weren't super athletic. Mm-hmm. We weren't just a spot up shooter. Mm-hmm. We weren't but we were good enough to do we fundamentally sound we had everything, could dribble with both hands, can handle the ball, you're not gonna steal it from us. Nope. We're not gonna turn it over much. Nope. We're gonna make free throws. We're gonna make open shots. We're, you know like we literally bro like you're somebody who I hold to that to that key. so I came into that game mm-hmm. with like a personal thing. Like when that seriously, bro, and and Chris Brew came to y'all to Hoosiers instead of us. So I said, I'm guarding Chris Brew, yeah. and we've got to beat these niggas by at least twenty. Mm-hmm. Like that, like we. In the end, y'all had me who left us Dude. and came in. Like that, that game, I remember that, bro. We wanted that, bro. I like I that. was not like yeah. I, I. That we talk, I, bro. I was getting that win <laughs> for sure. I was, and then it was funny because Kiwi little ass is in a Hoosiers uniform yeah, up there yeah. cheering for us because it was me, Omari, yeah, Josh. Right, right. We got all the hood niggas. Y'all had the niggas. town. Y'all had the town. <laughs> it's me, Omari, yeah. Josh, Damon, Powell. Yeah. Uh, who else is on that team? Uh, y'all ain't have Corey Douglas, did you? No, I ain't no, we have okay. Corey. No. No, we didn't. But yeah, that, that was a good ass game. Nah, man. I remember that because we, we it was the last tournament of the summer. Yep, it was last yeah, tournament. Yeah, yep, because we in ended LA. up losing the DC Assault like in the Elite Eight. Yeah, and that was that yeah. was to get to the Elite Eight, I think, right. or something yeah. like that. And I I never forget that game. Like we, you know, because on, on our Hoosier team, everybody who played for us went D one. So right. we felt, you know, we right, had our right, chest right. out. Right, like, right, no, right, we right. Didn't. Y'all kicked our ass. It's yeah. right, though. We're going to so, talk about um, Amador. Uh, no, we're not. No, we're not. You see, I, you see I zone right past that. Amador was in junior year, bro. Right? You missed that opportunity. Okay, yeah. No, let's talk about that. I'm fucking with you. And actually, I was going to talk about that at the end, but that's perfect. Um, so, we met in, in San Diego junior yes. year. This was probably one of the most fun games I ever played in. Mm-hmm. One of the most – and I don't even think I had that great of a game. I think I had like 13 or something. Mm-hmm. But um, – just being in a whole nother area, like knowing y'all whole team pretty yeah. much, because I knew y'all coaches, I mm-hmm. knew everybody, and uh, let's talk. Let's talk about that game a little bit. So, who did you guys play in the first round and the second round? If you remember, was it local teams? I don't know. We beat the shit out of them, though. Like, yeah, we, we, it was thirty and thirties and forties. We went to the zoo and shit. We damn, was y'all was smacking them like that? Yeah, for sure. Y'all blew us out too. Yeah. I mean, that was, but that was during year. Like, that, we was 33 and 2 yeah, that year. So, y'all we, we was locked in in a way. Y'all was also. walking through the hotel with y'all chest out and shit. Yeah, I, mean, I know, didn't want to kick it with y'all. Like, it was hey, so dead. Like, hey, bro, like, bro, what you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah, bro I was on a mission. <laughs> but you know it's all love, though. Sure. But, yeah. but um, the reason why I say that was one of the, the most fun games because it was literally, literally like, one of the – one of the most fun times in high school where I had the other team genuinely rooting for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I felt – not saying that, like, it, we y'all wasn't playing hard against me. Like, obviously, we trying to bust each other ass. Like, yeah. at one point, you meet the ref thought me and you was about to fight. Yeah. Like, like, bro, we're brothers. Like, yeah. nigga, you shut up. You tell us, <laughs> stop talking to each other, nigga. We grew up together. Like, I think – was your pops there? Pops was yeah, there. he was in the front row. He yeah. So, they talking shit. Like, that, that shit was fire, bro. So, talk about uh, that tournament and just, you know, your experiences of playing against us and all of that. Um, so – like I said, we was 33 and 2 that year. You we keep repeating that, bro. I oh, heard you the first 17 sure, times you said it. We was <laughs> going, bro. Um, I ain't mad at you. Bro. And it's funny because um, Kiki talked about it when they went to Arizona and in San Diego. We would be on them, them trips with them. Mm-hmm. So, like, they was 
killing everybody on the girl side, we was killing everybody on the guy side. Yeah. Um, so we went down there, smacking everybody. And I knew you was down there with Amador. Um, so we was about to play, and I remember we going through the scout, and I was telling my coach, like, nah, I got him. I'm, I'm going to guard him. You know, it's all good. I know him. Right, right, right. And i never forget, um, you know, if you don't know where Amador is, Amador is in Pleasanton. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm out there talking shit. Like, right, it is what right, it is. Right. And I remember you said, y'all, you ain't going to punk us. You ain't going to punk us. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, y'all yeah. ain't going to punk us. Bro, I'm telling you. Yeah. If we let these dudes jump out on us, we not going to get oh. back. They're too athletic. Yeah. I knew what time it was, bro. Yeah. Just calling a spade a spade. Yeah. But for me, that, that shit, bro, I had so much fun. And then it was like one point, you, like, because I, early I got away from you, I hit a three. For sure. And then it was like, oh, this, he was in my shit. Like, I was getting like, it was no way. And then what's crazy is the game before that. I had probably the most points I had ever scored in the court. I scored 17 points in the first quarter against the Ohio team. Oh, wow. And the rest of the game, they literally guard. Like, I had to tell the dude that they had the ball because he was just face guarding <laughs> me. Like, and, and, and there was a dude on their team talking hell and shit. I just signed to Ohio State. I'm like, bro, I have 26, and it's the second quarter. <laughs> yeah, you talking <laughs> like, to me about And Ohio I don't State. even care to get buckets. Like, I just, yeah. I'm out here having, like, yeah. I hoop. Like, I'm not even a scorer, but I have 26 in the second quarter. Yeah. I just wouldn't miss. It was one of them games where I'm hitting everything. But um, you guys won the tournament, obviously. You won the tournament. Motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, uh, so let's go back to senior year, and then you played DBC again for that, that summer, right? Yeah, uh, pretty much. I, I played a couple um, games or tournaments with the Soldiers 2 mm -hmm. team. Okay. Uh, because I came on, like I said, the article was done, and they was like, oh, he'll be shooting up for the Soldiers 2. So okay. I played a couple. Uh, it wasn't really my fit. Like, I was comfortable with DBC. Um, and then – like that year coming up, I was like, all right, this kind of going to be my year. Like yeah. everybody wanted me to try Like the thing was to give me a scholarship, you yeah. know what I mean? So I had Yale on me pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was just going to be like kid for me something going to Yale. Um, but before that, we got to talk about how we thought you was going to St. Mary's and I was going to transfer because we, <laughs> really? we took that SAT at Tech. Right. Yeah. And you were telling all the schools, and you was like, man, I think I might go to, I yeah. might go to Mary's. So I'm scrambling. I'm like, hey, Pops, like, we just had this whole article. <laughs> like, I'm just coming out. I'm panicking. Like, I don't know, nothing, I don't know much about who. Right. But I would always talk to his dad, mm -hmm. and I would always talk to my dad about it. And his dad was just like, nah, just stay. You'll be good. He'll, he's probably going to Matt. Yeah. And this was before anybody pretty much knew. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I'm, and, I'm good again. And what's crazy is, honestly, when, until you mentioned that to me not too long ago, I forgot all about that. Yeah. And that just showed you how close I am with you and yep. your family. Because when I was leaving Amador, yeah. it, what, what happened was I think your dad got wind that mm -hmm. I was doing a shadowing at St. Joe's. Because mm -hmm. I ended up doing a shadowing at St. Joe's. And he was not happy about no. that. I don't know if he called my dad or me directly <laughs> or my mom. Yeah. But he was like, nah. And I, I really was thinking about coming to St. Mary's, but yeah. just Berkeley was too far, bro. Yeah. So that's yeah. why he, he – I was talk, we were talking too big our limb. Yeah. So that's why so. when he told you, like, nah, he's going to Mac. But nah, like, that definitely right. was a was a thought for sure. Nah, and it would have been I cool. completely forgot about that. So I think at Mills release party you yep, mentioned that. Yep. And but, I was um, just, I, it was just on my mind, heavy. Right. But like, cause I'm 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 really a, a creature of habit. And right, right, right. It, at least with hoop, I got to be comfortable. Cause if I, if not, I get frantic and all that. But I had a role. I was like, we going senior year. Like it was going great and. Like, we'll, we'll get into all that other stuff. But, yeah, no, nah, that was it. It was just junior year after that. Like, I had Yale on me. I had real good schools about real good academics on me. And I was like, man, I, I could go anywhere I want pretty much and right. not play hoop, but I would like to continue. So, yeah. No, nah, that's that's fire, bro. Um, So, so senior year, uh, how was how was that? Obviously, coming off of a loss in the state championship. At this point, Salesian is starting to come up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's why we – getting into it. I'll just say we were lazy. We, we we knew what we were doing. Our practices weren't as intense. We just we just got lazy. And every time it was just like, yeah, we finna blow teams out by 30. Even when we lost to Salesian the first time, we gonna blow them out. Second time, we gonna blow them out. Third time, yeah, it's a fluke. We gonna blow them out. You all right over there, buddy? Then, nah. <laughs> nah, <laughs> bro, that, that still over. hurt, man. So, um, Did you guys, they swept y'all that year? Yeah, man, so, fuck them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, up, shout out, shout up, out to Dad, shout out Bari, shout yeah, out Kim. Nah, that's family, of course. They, um, they know what it is. But, Trust me, Bari had 
as much as y'all hating talking about this right now, Bari had just as much fun on this show. About when we got to this point, he couldn't wait. <laughs> I, go ahead. I went to the state game with, with his pops and them. For I real? was just so I was so upset, and I'll I'll, let, I'll let him talk about it. It's good. It's good. So <laughs> before that, um, I had committed to San Jose State. Right. So going into my senior year, I was already committed. So I, I kind of had a a level of, of Continuous. Comfortability, yep. like yep. I'm good. I'm not really playing for nothing. Like I've, I'm already set to go where I'm going. Um, but senior year was good. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we're gonna get into this lesion thing, but you know, it was good. I was comfortable. Like I said, it was like 14, 8, and seven. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like it's just I'm good. Like, Solid. You know what good I'm saying? Being yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm being me. You know, I got you know he's starting, so it's me, him, Chris, and the twins. Mm. Um, and we just nice comfortable, man. Too. You know, athletic we yeah, fun. athletic, trapping everywhere, um, and it it was good. But you know, first, you know, we wanted to play y'all. No, y'all did. No, 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 no. Stop we did. acting. Hey, no, no, hey, no. Hey, come on, y'all didn't want we no did, smoke, bro. bro. We did. From what I was told, the call was made that we could have did this closed with nobody, Facts. and y'all turned it down. I ain't no y'all. Nah. I, I, I couldn't. I didn't have any <laughs> say so about it. But when I heard me and Chris and Chris went to our coach, yeah. it's like, yo, Manny, like, hook it up. Like, yeah. we not yeah. running from shit. Right. Because, we wanted it, man. You know, it's you, Will, Q, Dame. Like, we, we with right, it. Right, right. Like I'm, I want to play y'all just on some like we haven't Damn, played y'all type bro. shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I do That's got a real. question for you though. What's so up? like we knew what we thought of y'all. What did y'all think of us? I bro? wanted that. I no, wanted because that. just like cause, I, to be honest, I would have rather played y'all the year before. That was my stance. Okay. I, I was like, I want to do it, but I would have because I felt like that year we were we we had y'all outmatched. Hmm. We had y'all outmatched. Why? What, 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 what makes you say that? <laughs> the yeah, twins were young pups, bro. My senior year? Yeah. Dom. Dom was Dom, Dom was, was a, coming into his own. There was nobody. There was no. Dom is a monster. First of all, so I don't. I know no disrespect. Dom, no, he's my guy. We yeah, met on the sure. collegiate level, so he yeah. know. But when, what I'm saying is, Dame was too battle tested, bro. That, like we had a unicorn. That's true. So it was like it, it like. You can, bro. I've seen the shit that is, I, bro. I, I hear you. I, that dude is him and Omari, bro. Yeah. Are two people that is just like I'm a fan of. So I'm on a team with two. Omari is. I've never seen anybody. I've been all across the world. Yeah. I've never seen anybody like what I what Omari used to do when we were kids. That's bro. fast. I've yeah. never seen That's Damon fast. Powell. Same. Like nowadays, that Duncan shit is normal. The shit I used to see that, bro. I remember one time we was in Houston. Omari threw Damon a lob. He jumped up. And then just came down. And we like, bro, what the fuck? He's like, bro, I jumped too high and I was scared. <laughs> like, bro, what? I think about that, bro. Hey, bro what? I swear, ask, I, bro, you can ask anybody this story. He jumped up. It was out of bounds, but he jumped up and was like, didn't get it. Yeah. And it was like, bro, what? The, it was a perfect pass. He's like, bro, I was too high. And I was like, oh, yeah, this nigga's unreal, bro. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just think we had too much. So, so you guys obviously think y'all would have beat us. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Why? Where's, gonna, where's that advantage? In your opinion. I mean, it would just be you a... You don't have to call nobody out. Obviously, no shot at the Twins. No, I love no, no, y'all. No, 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 no. But sure. I, I just felt like we were we were more war-ready, but... It was just, it would have just been a battle. Like, I, I don't... For sure. I don't look at it like, you know, it would have been a clear-cut winner. Like, you know, obviously, with y'all three-headed monster and, right. and you, Will and Q, like, that was... Right. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't light. That right. wouldn't have been taken light, you know? And I feel like for me... Him, C, the twins, like we would, it would have just been a battle. Yeah, but it been one of them. you know, looking, where, looking back, where are we playing at? Huh? Where are we playing at? We gotta, gotta be, play at, gotta be at, at B high or like. So we, we can't play at Mac. We can play uh, at Mac. Nah, it's, it, it, ain't enough, it, it ain't enough space if we have fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, we right. couldn't play at St. Mary's. He is too small. Yeah. But nah, I mean, hey man, I would have loved to play at Mac. I, I don't know. I, I just think. The reason why it would have been such a good game is because what y'all were good at, so were we. Yes. Yeah. Run yeah. and jump, athletic. Yeah. Just. Punching people in the mouth and yeah. and taking and being the aggressor, so I think that shit would have been a fun. It would have been fun. It would have been one of those ones that no matter who won, we would have wanted to play again. Facts. Yeah, yeah, you know definitely. what I mean. No matter what. Um, what do you who who do you think would have won? Obviously, oh, and well, why? you know, I got to roll with Saint Mary. But what's your reason? Sure. Though? Tell me. My, okay, so my reasoning is, you got to think like X factors. Y'all had like I would say star power. Like mm-hmm. it, it don't it, it probably don't if you look back on it, like y'all had star power. I know Everybody what you mean. was going I know what you mean. to big play. Everybody we had, had the specialists. Hype. We had yeah. the, the Y'all had like specialists. 
And I feel like our X factors over, like, in a situation like that, like Doggy Dog, like the X factor would have took over at me. I'm not saying I'm the X factor. I know what you mean. But though. just just that little that Who little. Who was the fifth starter? Chris? Yeah, Minnie Head. Okay. Yeah, nah. Shout out Chris. Shout Minnie out Chris. Head, yeah, that was tough. <laughs> yeah, Minnie Head was hit or miss, though. I that, love that, Minnie Head. That would have been... That would have been the exposed. But Mini Head had some big fucking for games. For sure, yeah, though. Yeah, for sure. But it just, you know. Y'all got me fucked up, bro. Y'all got me fucked up. If y'all think I'm going to agree with y'all. No, we played, man, we played ten times. Nah, we six, went in eight. Six, four. Don't get it. Eight, eight, two. Eight, two. Eight, two. Six, six, four. Eight, 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 all right, I wouldn't so, watch y'all play. So let's uh, let's let's let's, let's have this uh, Salesian talk. So what All happened right. with the Salesian? How the hell? So y'all thought y'all was gonna beat us, but y'all got swept by Salesian. All All right, let's so talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right, so boom. So we play every year in this game called the Rock Game. Uh, so the Rock Game. The Rock R O C K. R O C K. So okay. Salesian and St. Mary's are like rivals, right? It's like right. Ohio State and Michigan type thing. Like we don't like them, they don't like us. Mm. So when Barry and Dez was over there, them is my guys. Like we've been playing. You know, AAU since, you know, pups. Right. Mm. But, you know, when you on the court, you know how it is. Right, right, like, right. you yep. know, yep. you my brother. I right. love you. But right. when we on the court, man, nah. It's, it's, I wouldn't want to know other way, bro. No. No other way. That's how we, that's how we are who we are. Come on, That's man. how we grew up. Mm. So, the rock game, we played them. They beat us. I fouled out that game. Barry tried to dunk on me. And they caught a flagrant foul because I blocked this shit. Let's talk about it. Um, <laughs> Where was y'all at? We was at St. Mary's. Um, so we lost that game. Then we lost to him in NCS by seven. I popped my shoulder out. And they're not excuses, but you know, it is what it is. And then we lost to him in the league. They just beat us. And then the last game. Damn, they beat y'all four times. Four times. So Amari did say that too. So they beat us the right game, Ocho. league, NCS, and then NorCal. So NorCal, we was up 13 with three minutes. Three minutes, 30 seconds. 13. In the game? In the game. So we're, we're walking to the bench, and I think it was, he somebody said it's Dez, Chris Brew. He said, man, pack y'all, pack y'all bags. Y'all the fuck out of here. So we talking shit. Like, we got them. And our coach decided, you know what? I'm going to take, he took C out, put in another player. I'm not going to name him, but he put in another player. I think I know the name. Okay. And when he put him in, Mellis looked at that player, told D.A., Bunch me. go to work. D.A.? D.A. D.A.'s a freshman. That's why I said that. D.A.'s 5'8". Like He's little. He's not D.A. That's now. That's what I'm saying. This is still baby D.A. Baby Before D.A. is D.A. now. This baby what made DA. him D.A. now. Yeah. This, this game changed D.A. forever. He scored nine straight points. He went down, hit a three. We went down, missed a shot. He came down, hit another three. We went down, missed a shot. He came down, hit another three in like a minute 30. So we went so from now up 13 to, four. to up four. We come Man. down, miss another shot. Kendall gets a rebound, puts it back. We come down. Like, execution is horrible at this point. Like, mm-hmm. all of the accolades and, the, you know, you're so calm and collected. I was flustered. I, I'll take that. He's still out the game, by the way, and they serve him. So we go down to they go score to go up one. I don't know what happened. So it's 14 or 15 seconds left, and we call timeout. We're going to run a handoff play. Chris is going to hand it off to me. I'm attacking middle, make a play. Chris hands it off. When he hands it off, I'm coming off, and Barry's trailing me. He falls. Barry? Barry. But he was, he was holding me, so he falls. I'm like, oh, bet. I'm coming off the, the handoff, and I see a lane. And at this point, I'm athletic, so right, I'm, so I'm like, I'm about to it. dunk on whoever this is, talk shit, all of that. I hear the whistle blow. I'm like, oh, Bart was grabbing me. Offensive oh, foul. That's payback because you did that shit to me. <laughs> you did that shit to me in San Diego, bro. You grabbed my jersey. I slapped your hand off, and they called the foul on me. Yeah. Yeah, tech. They got called a tech. That's yeah, crazy, bro. So that's fucking payback. Bro. Oh, that ain't no damn payback. So, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So they, they, they called an offensive foul. My coach loses it, gets a tech. You got like two. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, some, like our assistant got a tech. Manny got a tech. And it's their ball. Game over. Game over. I did the Adam Morrison, fell in the middle of the court crying and shit. So this is playoff? This was NorCal. This, this is my last high school game ever. Damn. In our last 10 games of the season, I, did, I wasn't playing a lot because 
and he just thought that I checked out. But I guess the, there was a, a incident in a in a video room where there was a missed assignment, and I called him out in the middle. I said it, it wasn't uh, say it wasn't our limb assignment; it was somebody else's assignment. And ever since then, my playing time just every game went down, down, really? down. So yep, scared off all the schools. Yep. So in that last uh, that last game, I remember throwing away my medal because we got a second place medal. I'm like, I don't want this shit because I barely played, right. and I knew why because it was just politics and yeah. hoop that I ain't. That I, ain't. I went through that shit when I got to the collegiate level, bro, yeah. and that shit turned me off from basketball. That's right, honestly right. why I fell out of love with hoop because mm -hmm. that shit became too much politics. You know what I mean? But um. So you're already committed to San Jose State sign mm -hmm. and stuff. So how how was it making that transition? You already said touched on it earlier. You had to readjust to the pace and everything. What about the academic part of it? Um, it's funny because you know St. Mary's is St. Mary's, and you know it's St. Mary's College High School, so it's a college right. prep high school. So I think the the academic portion going from St. Mary's to San Jose State was seamless. Like mm -hmm. you know the course load is just different. You got your own freedom. So you got to go to class. Like you're not, you know, nobody really checking on yourself or your coaches. But as far as the academics, when it was, it was smooth sailing. The basketball was different. And then, <laughs> where do you go uh, off the bat? Um, so I ended up not having schools looking at me, but a lot of them wanted me to walk on. And uh, at this time, like I'm getting in trouble a little bit off the court, and you know, messing around with my cousins and all that, and. My mom was like, you should just get as far away as you can. So me and Pops took a trip to Hampton, and uh, like I saw a beautiful campus, beautiful women, beautiful everything. I was like, Dad, regardless, we'll figure that out. I'm going here. He was like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm going here. So I ended up doing real good in track, my first season of track ever high jumping. And Hampton was like, you could come here and do both. Like, you so raw, just, just come up here. So I got up there, and I was just everywhere in college. But Hampton, Hampton made it out. <coughs> That's what's up. And you ended up finishing there. I finished there. I finished there early, so I oh, had like shit. a. I, I finished in three, I believe, three years, maybe three years in a semester, because I had like three more courses. But I was enrolled in a five-year program, and I didn't do that last year because uh, I went to the Philippines to play. What um what I want to talk about that a little bit. What what was it that inspired you academically? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Man, I, in seventh grade, we used to do these uh, social studies projects. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember from uh, Miss Grizel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she always would have us doing ge ge uh, geography, like geographic mm -hmm. type of projects. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot about different countries, and I just became like a study habit. Like I wanted to study everything. Mm -hmm. So when I got to high school, I was like, I was questioning everything, but I would get everything right. And it just drove me to read as much as I could, to learn as much as I could without nobody knowing too. Like I kind of wanted to be that smart guy that nobody knew. And I think that's what drove me through high school, college, like even now. It just, like them seventh grade projects. I was like, I got to learn as much as I can. Why didn't you want anybody to know? Um, well, that's a perfect segment to talk about with you because, you know, we used to be at them parties in, right. in the East. And, right, right. and, you know, my brother would be in the gym hooping. And I didn't know, like, he was getting ready for college. I just thought that I would get a scholarship too just because right. I was, like, hanging out with y'all, hanging out with Jerry. So when I was out there, um, I would get teased because, you know, I was different. I went to Catholic school. I had two parents. Like, you know you what I'm mean, saying? When you say out there, you mean outside? Yeah, just mm -hmm. like outside, just like being with Low and right, right, right. old school squad and all mm -hmm. that. And I was just like, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to just dumb it down just because I didn't want to get laughed at or teased. They already knew I went to St. Mary's. They right. already knew, like, like, it was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's Chris. Like, he's he know people. Right, 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 right. I was right. just like, man, let me just not say shit before it. And I'm glad that was your answer, to be honest, because I was hoping it was just because I wanted to touch on that. And I think a lot of people, we don't talk about this enough in the um, inner city, and I've been preaching this lately the last couple of weeks and a lot of conversations I've been having with people close to me when it comes to mental health and stuff mm -hmm. like yeah. that. <clears throat> um, we, we have to, a lot of times we don't, we talk about the victims and, you know, what they go through if somebody gets shot yeah. or if somebody gets, if somebody, you know, dies or goes to jail for a long time. And we talk about the victim, and of course, rightfully so. But I don't think we talk about enough about the uh, the survivor's remorse side of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for you, how, how was it knowing that <clears throat> just a few months ago you're running the streets with people like, you know, Lowe. Shout out to Lowe, man. Free, out, free my yes. cousin. Free Lowe, out, man. I just spoke to him not too long ago. We talk regularly, man. I, I cannot wait for that dude to come home. Mm -hmm. um, but um, at any point... Did you ever feel like while you're in Hampton is in where Virginia? Yep, Virginia. So when you're in Virginia, probably living you're at HBCU, so you probably it's a little different than me. You probably dealing with some of the same issues, but for me, 
I'm around a bunch of white people. I don't got to look over my shoulder. And like yeah. you say, we were outside around a, a lot of the same people. Yeah. So I'm used to having to watch my back. Or if somebody comes too close to me, I'm, I'm in defense mode and I'm checking them. Did you ever kind of have moments or, or times where you would be in college and you're like, damn, I, my, my niggas or my guys are back home going through this and now I'm over here living in paradise. Did you ever yeah. feel like that? And if so, how did you deal with it? Yeah, all the, all the time. I think that's where I caught my first little uh, – uh, moment of what they call the blues slash depression uh, was when uh, my cousin Devontae Riley got shot on his birthday on uh, on my mom's birthday too like mm. they shared the same birthday and uh, she called me and was like you know uh, De Devontae got shot I was like for real and like you know we had been kind of dealing with it in high school right. but everything was fun like mm -hmm. traumatic experiences were fun right. just cuz but normal. I think that when I was out there, I was like, my mission, honestly, and, I, and I, I'm glad I could put this out here, was to get Lowe to come to school with me. Mm. Like, that's all I wanted. Like, I just wanted somebody to come to school with me. Like, I knew he was at San Jose State, and I knew that my cousin E was uh, kind of fading in and out. But I was just like, if I get Lowe up here, everybody going to follow Lowe. Right. So everybody going to go to college, and that's how we're going to get the East up here. But when, you know, when Lowe went down, it was just like, that's when it started kicking in. I was like, damn, do I even deserve to be here? Like, if I was back home, I'd be right with him. Or, you know, situations like that. So I think that I was handling it, handling it by trying to put myself in everything I could. So I would be, I was in the business school, I was in the business program, I was still hooping, I still did track for a little bit, had to stop it, but I tried to do everything I could in college just to shade what was going on back home. Mm -hmm. And it helped, but it also hindered a lot of things, just keeping it in, too, so. And then what, what people have to understand is <clears throat> keeping it in is, 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 it's always, you know, that's how we cope with it, that's how we deal with it. But it's gonna eventually boil over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for some people, it boils over in different ways. Some people have incidents where they're lashing out, they become violent. You know, everybody has their way of, of when, when they hit that, that point. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> thank you for, you know, talking about that, because that's always something that I've, been thinking about it's like I used to remember saying I would be in college it's like bro that year that you're talking about when Tay died it was one of my worst years of my life bro just yeah. even me looking back on it like a lot of people don't understand I lost Mel, Mel uh, Melvin Landry mm -hmm. Lil Mel and Low to, to prison around the same time yeah. and these are two cats to where when I'm home in the summer they come into my mom house at 7 6 30 7 <laughs> in the morning yeah. every day yeah and at that time I'm sleeping in so they waking me up. Oh, we coming to kick it. Auntie, open the door. Like they, you know, that's how we are with yeah. with us. But um, so I lost both of them around like the same time, and it was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? I still had my guys. You know, a lot of friends, but just losing both of them, it really, really, because like you said, it was I was always, it was always me and Low, or me and remember me and Low was at Mac together. Yeah, yeah. So we had just, that's we had just kind of. We became, we was already close, but we were closer because we was at Mac together. Mm -hmm. Me and Mel was, I mean, that, don't, that goes without being explained. You yeah, see what I'm yes. saying? But that, thank you for, touch, to, yeah, for touching no, on that and kind of opening up about that. Um, <clears throat> let's give a, a brief uh, overview for you, how, how San Jose State was playing and uh, how that, how that career, your career went for you up there and how you felt looking back over it and stuff. Um, when you talk about, like, you know, um, kind of falling out of love, um, you know, San Jose State was a situation where I felt like I was home enough to where everybody can come see me, mm -hmm. but I'm far enough away to have my own experience. So um, it was, it was, you know, my freshman year, you know, you're a freshman, you got to do all of the duties and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I had an opportunity to, to play a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't ride the bench in the sense of like, you know, I got in, I got to, you know, really kind of get my feet wet. You know, we played Washington that year. They went to the Sweet 16 with Isaiah Thomas, Quincy mm. Pond, Dexter. You know, I got to get it. I got to play in that. We played St. Mary's. They went Sweet 16 that year. So, you know, my freshman year was good. They you had Dela Vadova that year, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Deli was young. Yeah, he was a freshman. Deli was young. And, um, you know, just to have the ability to kind of get my feet wet, see the college game, and then, you know, from there it just, you know, politics happened. And, and then for me, like, you know, it just – I always worked hard. I always understood who I was. And you talked about, you know, the, the mental maturity. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, me and my dad, I think that's where I got the appreciation for him even more. Because we would be up on the phone 3 in the morning talking, just like, man, I don't know what else to do. Like, I'm trying to go to the gym. I'm trying to, you know, watch film with these coaches. And it's just not panning Trends out how it. I thought it was. So, um, you know, I just I took it as an as a opportunity to, to build me as a person. You know what I'm saying? Build my Smart. leadership skills, build, you know, um, the ability to have connections at San Jose State. So 
Um, it didn't go how I wanted to in the sense of like, you know, in my mind, I'm going D1. I'm, you know, I'm going to play four years here. If I'm not in the NBA, I'm going overseas. Right. I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Like, and it didn't go like that. But at the same time, like, life happened. And then life, life came to, to be something that was extremely important for me. So, you know, even though the basketball didn't work out, I always had love for San Jose State because it taught me how to be a man. Man, I, that that was well said. Well said. How how did you? Uh, me and me and C Head obviously talked about the mental health aspect. You kind of touched on it. How how was it for you? I know how it felt for me when you had to come to that realization. Like I might have to hang these Nikes up. Yeah. Did you ever go through a dark space or a tough time? I'm sure you did. But can you give a little detail on that? How you dealt with it? How you came out of it? Um. Yes. So my sophomore year, going into my junior year, um, we had recruited a couple guards. You know, and I'm like, yo, I'm here. Like, what we doing? But those guards who they recruited ended up being some of my best friends on this earth. That's fire. Um, so, you know, just having the ability to, to be open and talk to them. And then also, you know, um, shout out to my fiance. You know, you know, I got to shout her out. Um, Black love, man. Yeah, I love to now. see it. Congratulations um, on that, brother. For real. That, I hit you when, you when it happened. But yeah. Congrats on that, man. Um, That's beautiful, beautiful thing. We was we was together, so you know I just leaned on her a lot, and you know had the ability to talk to her. I would call him, you know, in Hampton. Um, you know, me and you spoke because right. you, yep. you was going through it around exactly. the same time. Yep. So you yep. know what I'm saying, just yep. to have the outlets to know, like you know, I can talk to him and then let him know what's going on. Me and you going through right. similar things, so we could kind of talk through how yep. we going through it, but. You know, man, just having family and friends to lean on and really just being open and honest with that. Like, I'm not in a good space. Yep. Accepting that and, and moving forward from it. Again, man, very well said, bro. I, um, I'm glad you said that, too, because, um, I, you know, I tell people that all the time. You know, you have to – when this is like a little thing I've been telling people. It's like we don't choose our parents, right? Mm -mm. So, with that being said, you usually don't choose where you grow up. So with that being said, you don't you, you don't really get to pick what schools you go to because you can only pick from certain yeah. ones. So with that being said, you usually don't get to pick your friends except for the ones out that that are available. Yeah. So imagine a draft pool and you only have these people in the draft mm -hmm. and you got to pick your friends. That's pretty much what we go through. Yeah. But when we come become adults and we get to experience and live life and find out who we are as people and what we like to do, what's fun. Like me and you used to hang out. We don't do yeah. that no more. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Just at fashion. one point that was fun for us, yeah, for sure. being, on the, being in the streets mm -hmm. and running around and you know what I mean? But at, at this point now we've grown as men and we don't do it. Yeah. And I say all that to say, it's like you have, to you have to learn how to put yourself around people who add value to your life. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I, I, that's like one of my biggest things I've been preaching to a lot of younger people is, um, you know, it's good to have friends. There's no love lost. You know, it's, it's okay to outgrow people. It's okay to love each other from a distance. I have some of my closest friends from back when those times I was at your house that I barely talk to now. Yeah. That don't mean I don't love them. That don't mean we ain't, when we do see each other, it ain't the same as it was last time we see each other. Yeah. But it's just we in different paths. And that's Fact. okay. You know what I mean? So you being a, you you saying that you have people around you who you could talk to who are going through similar things, it's like you almost need that. Like that needs to be a necessity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then for you being that person to, to, that's to have somebody to lean on, because we don't talk about that enough as well, when you're that strong person, and I deal with it a lot, I have a lot of people who hit me a lot about mental health, you yeah. know, and I love it. Yeah. I love I don't mind people hitting me, so keep hitting me, but it sometimes the strong needs somebody to be yeah. strong for them, and right when there. I'm having my bad days or my breakdowns, I have to look for people. So who are some of the people that you kind of look to? I know myself being one of them, because yeah. we talk all the time, but some, outside of me, who yeah. else do you have around you? Obviously, your brother next yeah. to you. I know you're gonna say that one too. <laughs> uh, but other than other than me and him, like who else do, would you want to shout out as far as people who you could, you feel like you can lean on? And yeah, for sure. Um, well, you know, we used to have those uh, those uh, sidekicks. You have right. your fave five, yeah. right? So, like, you would throw people in and contacts in. But uh, my my dad and and his dad, mm -hmm. like, they always were the parallel. So, mm -hmm. like, if if my dad didn't get it, I talked to his dad. If his dad maybe wasn't getting it, I talked to my dad. Right. Uh, those are two definitely. Definitely in uh, my our teammate CJ uh, Andalo uh, definitely deal with some of the same things. Is that the one that played uh, basketball? Yeah, he mm -hmm. used to go to Ants, but he used to hoop with Elliot. 
Yeah. Yep. Oh, with the rebel. That's it. You, bro, what's, what's up with him? Is he cool? He's good. Yeah, yeah that's, he's that's good. my brother. I'll Tell him I said what's up, I, I, bro. I, I, I remember <laughs> him. That was my guy. Shout was, out to Bro, he was one of the funniest dudes, bro. He's oh, yeah. super cool. Yeah, super yeah, cool. Yeah, Tell him so I said what's up. Please. I got but you. I didn't mean uh, to interrupt you, but nah, go ahead. so him, uh, and, and this is going to be a weird one, but I, I talked to Lowe. Like, I talked mm. to Lowe as much as I can. I talked to Lowe at least, I don't want to say every day, because you might get in trouble, but three times a week. So. We'll bounce ideas off of each other, and even though he's in like the place he's in, he always seems to up- uplift me. Yeah. And I don't know how, but I just I go to him. I say, bro, I feel bad for even doing this, but yeah. he's just like, no, it's good. Like, keep coming to me, uh, and I'll just come to you the same way. But yeah, definitely well. Uh, like I said, his his pops, my pops, and and CJ definitely lean on him for sure. Man, well, uh, man, this was a dope ass conversation, bro. Yeah. I, I want to. Yeah. Um, I would just say, um, if, if you could give not only somebody like me and uh-huh. Lim, uh-huh. but maybe some viewers out there, what are some uh, tips that you do to help combat like mental health and, and depression and everything that we talked about? <clears throat> um, thank, great question. Uh, obviously, we talked about it a little bit off camera, but for me, it's more so uh, about just being honest with yourself. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We've all talked about it. We've reiterated that as, throughout this conversation. And when I say that, it's literally, you. I can tell you guys, oh, I'm doing fine. You know what I mean? Everything is great. Yeah. I got a million dollar deal I'm finna do tomorrow and all yeah. this and that, but I can't lie to myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when I'm brushing my teeth in the mornings, I have to have those conversations sometimes. And I gotta shake myself up like, all right, bro, we got a mission. We don't have time for you. I give, what I do, I give myself a day or two every mm-hmm. once in a while. Mm-hmm. That's very important. That's one thing I do. I just had to do it the other day, and now I'm behind on editing. But I'm okay. <laughs> I'll catch up. You yeah. know what I mean? But every once in a while, you have to take a step back, take some of that pressure off yourself, bro, because sometimes we hold ourselves to too high of a standard. You know what I mean? And we don't understand that life is uh, about making mistakes. Yeah. Life is trial and error. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody, There's nobody in this fucking world who can say... Um, I have the answers to everything. I know the perfect way to live life. Not even our parents. And sometimes we even hold them to too high of a standard. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's what I do, bro. I just be realistic with myself. You know, I'll give myself a pat on the back, bro. Celebrate your small wins. Mm-hmm. Even if it's me put, getting you guys together finally. I'm happy about that. Yeah. I saw y'all like, I'm, I'm glad we got this. I text y'all. Hell, I was up at four. I was like, man, I got to be respectful. I can't. You know, I, don't want, I don't want your lady to think it's somebody else texting you. That's, you know, seriously, that's, that's though. Real so it's like, damn, I can't wait. But I just want to confirm, make sure we're doing this today. But yeah. that's a small win. You yeah. know what I mean? Getting three people together on, who have busy schedules. Yeah. You know, stuff to do. Like So I say that to say, bro, to answer your question, <clears throat> there, there's no win too small that's, it's like, that's not worth celebrating. You, you owe that to yourself, bro. We all go through stuff, bro. And another thing is when I'm going through something, I never minimize it. I never minimize it, bro. No matter how small it is, bro. If I fucking spill my water right now, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that might not be that big of a deal to you. But no, you never know what I've been through. I could have used to get beat for that. So that could trigger yeah. something in me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's another thing, bro. I just, I don't minimize nothing. I used to do that. Like, oh, this ain't that big of a deal. I'll get through it. There's other people going through shit worse than me. Worse than yeah, me. Yeah. You can't do that to yourself, bro. And that's probably what Lowe's thing is. He probably don't even understand that. But it's like, look at his situation. Yeah. But he's he's selfless enough to yeah. not even think about that. And you probably don't even understand, like, I'm a mental health guy, bro. This is therapy talk. That's but, good. But, and again, I say not to down credit, not to discredit or downplay low, but he does, He might not even realize that when you're coming to him, that's helping him. Yeah. Because you know what he's doing is taking his mind off his own problems. Yeah. So now he's trying to think of solutions and how to help you. Yeah. And that's what everything I do. And I just was telling you all that. Yeah. My, my, my consulting company is that. Like you said, how do you come up with these ideas, bro? I, my, if my mind doesn't work, yeah. I'm going to be depressed. If my mind isn't moving, I'm going to be depressed. Yeah. Like so I, idle time is one of my worst enemies, bro. So so like you said, I keep myself busy, but I don't overwork myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Those jogs that I go on, that shit is therapy for me. I had those conversations with myself when I'm jogging. I say the talk in the mirror, but it doesn't have to be in the mirror. Right, yeah. right. Sometimes I'm driving. Sometimes, And I cry, bro. I cry all the time. Yeah. Get that shit out. Because when yeah. you suppress, it's never going to end well, bro. Mm. Never. You feel me? When you put a close a soda, shake that motherfucker up. When it finally opens, it's gonna spill. Yeah, that's bro. We're 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 humans. It's okay to be human. Yeah. It's okay to not be okay, bro. It's yeah. okay, and that's that's how I approach life. And it's it might seem nonchalant, but I promise you, it's not. It's just my way of focusing on what I can control. Yeah, you know what I mean. If I if I put my energy on to what I can control, I'll be happier. Mm. And in order for me to be happier, in order for me to be my best. Uh, the best brother I can be to you, the best brother I can be to you, I have to be the best version of myself. Talk about it. 
I can't give you, I can try, but yeah. until I'm content and happy with it myself, like you said, like, it was hard for me to get rid of basketball. It was hard to walk away. Yeah. There were so many people that I thought I was going to be letting down. There yeah. were so many people that was like my dad, my mom, my, yeah. my friends, my, 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 my colleagues, my peers, everybody else who's still hooping. It's like, bro, after my freshman year, I didn't want to play no more. That's why he knows that. I was like, bro, I don't, this, I'm over this shit. Done. You feel me? But I don't mean to go on my rants, but that. Yeah, I really. I, I, but I'm so glad you asked that because I, I, this is what this platform, platform is for. Yeah. Because somebody might be dealing with that. Like, oh, and then, and like I told you earlier, is you have to understand it's never over, bro. The yeah. battle with depression is never yeah. over. The battle with mental health, anxiety, like that shit can, anything can trigger you. And the same with alcoholism. Uh, drug abuse, all yeah. of those things, it's an ongoing fight. The moment you feel like you won, the battle you lost. Yeah. That moment when you feel like I conquered it, because anything can slip you back That's in. And then what you do is you psych yourself out to justify it. Because I used to, when with, with drinking, I used to be like, oh, I'm, I just did this, I'm just going to have a drink. You feel me? But you know what I do now? It's like when I have, when I have like, an, uh, when I'm celebrating something, I just call people and talk. That's real. <laughs> you feel me? I just call and talk about my next goal, my next plan. And yeah. a lot of people, there's people I talk to every day that I didn't know I had none of this shit going on. Yep. None of it. But because I'm celebrating within myself, I'm not doing it to make nobody else happy. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. feel me? I'm doing it because I want to do it. Finally, I'm fine. Like you said, I wasn't yeah. supposed to be out there hanging out in the streets. I'm glad I did because I learned a lot and I'm a product of my environment. Yep. But now I'm making my environment a product of me. That's No, real shit. I love to talk. Trade more. I love to talk. Trade more. But um, more. What, what you guys, what you guys got coming up next, man? Anything in particular that we need to know about? Uh, any camps? Oh, you guys can't do camps. Nah. So right now, um, we got this thing called Shoot 360. Okay. Oh, I uh, heard of that. Yeah. So that's at uh, at the facility. Um, at the old private facility, the old Warriors private facility. Okay. So that's what we got going on as far as uh. Okay. You know, work and stuff like that. So if you want, you know, check that out. For sure. Um, last thing too, just real quick, uh, St. Mary's would have beat Mac in uh, 2009. <laughs> that is a damn lie. I just wanted to put that hey, out there. Uh, what is that? Will, Fake news. <laughs> Q. Bro, y'all wanted. Dang, y'all lost to Salida. Justin. Hey, you know what's shout crazy? Out to y'all. You know what's yeah, crazy? You know what's crazy? If if this was the NBA Finals and it was a seven game series, y'all would have got swept. <laughs> Like I said, yeah, <laughs> bro. Yo, you out there, out of pocket, bro. 2009, we the, we the, 2008, uh, whatever, we the one. I'm taking that. No, man, I love y'all dudes, man. For real, Appreciate please continue it. to be yourself, man. And yeah. and just know, bro. Me being like, whether you you know sign a pro contract tomorrow or not, bro. The person you are mm. out is gonna outlive that any career, any career you could ever have, bro. Don't beat yourself up. Don't put too much pressure on yourself, bro. Follow your dreams. Chase your dreams. And don't stop until you feel like it. You feel me? Gotcha. For you, bro, keep inspiring me. Come on, keep man. leading by example, bro. Shout out to Pops. Shout out to Fuck Pops, legend, man. man. To Pops. Um, you know, like I said, keep being great, bro. Keep doing everything that you're doing. Keep being the vessel and fucking being supportive of myself, everybody Come else. On, Shout man. out to, obviously, Dirty Pesos. Yeah. Ace Society. I'm wearing eight. Like, that's love, yeah, bro. Sure. Like, we wearing our friends' Come brands. Now. People that we've been naming. Shout out to Digo. You yeah, know, people yeah. that we've been naming throughout. Like, that's like that's what this is about. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? So, like I said, man, I want to thank you guys for coming down. Of um, course. I love you dudes, man. If love you have anything, you want to come back man. up, chop it up again. Uh, we can let's. What we need to do is let's invite more Mac players and more St. Mary's players. And we're gonna talk about this. Shit. <laughs> we can do that. We can I do like that. that. Oh, a whole little round table session. Right. Yeah. yeah I like man. That. Social distance way. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta be safe. <laughs> Will but, you get in a text after this? <laughs> <laughs> but man, like I said, I love you guys, man. And salute yeah. to you for real. Always love you, bro. Appreciate Thanks. you. Yes, sir.